I, um, I guess everybody was expecting interest rates to remain on hold today, especially after the share market tumbled so drastically yesterday. But it seems to me that what surprised everyone is the Reserve Bank Governor, Michelle Bullock, basically saying these interest rates are not going down for a long while yet. What's your take on, on, on what she told us today? Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, you've got to keep in mind that there's there's two sort of very different directions that things are heading at the moment. We're seeing inflation that's well above band, that remains above band, that has proven to be very resistant to the RBA's attempts to bring it back to that 2 to 3% level. It's sort of holding at around 4%, which is quite high and, and ultimately in the medium to long term, very damaging for the economy. So the RBA is, is very worried about the fact that We've got this persistent inflation that it's it's uh, across broad based sectors of the economy that it seems to be driven by uh, an excess of demand and stimulus from government. Um, so on the one hand, you've got this pressure to keep rates going up. On the other hand, you've got the volatility in the stock market. You've got concerns in China about slow growth, America about the uncertainty and slow growth there. We're starting to see unemployment pick up. So it's a, it's a very mixed picture. And one of the reasons I think why we've seen rates stay on hold, even if the RBA was perhaps tempted to increase rather than decrease them, is that there are so many mixed signals across different parts of the economy. Yeah, well, it is a witch's brew. There's no doubt about it. A really difficult one for policymakers. Um, as you say, the, uh, the, a lot of the discussion and speculation leading up to this was the next move, that there'd be a hold, but the next move would be down, that there, that there was a bias towards cutting interest rates in this country again. But uh, Michelle Bullock has admitted that they actually talked about the possibility of increasing them today. And here's a little bit more of what she had to say. What we can say is that a near-term reduction in the cash rate doesn't align with the board's current thinking. We've seen from overseas experience how bumpy inflation can be on the way down. And across the economy, we need to see demand and supply coming back into better balance. Now, I understand that this is not what people want to hear. Well, there you go. A lot of people are heavily uh, mortgaged, uh, heavily leveraged with their mortgages, uh, Simon. Uh, the suggestion there is interest rates won't be going down for quite some time. When, when do you see, looking at what's unfolding before us, even acknowledging how, uh, how, how uh, volatile it is, when do you think we will see a cut in the official interest rate? Well, look, the RBA is giving every indication that absent some remarkable new piece of news, so um, a, a significant action by a Reserve Bank overseas, uh, a narc fall in um, inflation, a significant rise in unemployment or, or an issue with growth, that they are not considering lowering interest rates anytime soon, arguably not even this year. Um, that, isn't, that does seem to be at odds with the moves and the, the, certainly the sentiments by some Reserve Banks across the country, uh, across the world, particularly in the US. Uh, but I think what we're seeing, all the messages that are coming out of Reserve Bank is they are debating between increasing interest rates and keeping them on hold. They are not planning for a reduction in interest rates, despite the fact that the market is clearly indicating they're expecting a reduction in rates. And the government is also making it clear that politically, they'd like to see interest rates come down too. They're desperate to see them go down before they go to the, go to the polls. And that may not be be happening. That's the political implication. Thanks so much for joining us, Simon. I appreciate it. Simon Cowan there from the Centre for Independent Studies.